Hello YouTube friends, it's been a long time since I last made a video and you guys have been asking for one and especially on Instagram you guys saw that I had the new Runcam hybrid and you asked when the video will be out so I guess that will be now. So uh, let's get into this video. So a bunch of people said that they could feel a little bit of latency or a bit of blocking in the video when they were using some of the Runcam split cameras. So Runcam's answer to this was to actually run a hybrid where you have one HD camera and one FPV camera. And another upshot of this is that we can actually use higher resolutions of HD now all the way up to 4K at 30 frames a second. Now I'm not going to go super in-depth on this video but I'll give you some of the basics. Technically it is a micro camera because its width is 19 millimeters, so it will fit in your standard micro camera mounts. However it is slightly taller than a micro camera at 25 millimeters, so you need to make sure that this will fit within your standoff height. The cable length going from the camera to the 20x20 20 20 board is 58 millimeters. The voltage range is from 5 volts up to 20 volts, but you don't want to power this direct from a 4S LiPo because the surges when you are actually pulling maneuvers will end up killing it. During my testing, I was using 5 volts and it was pulling around 480 milliamps. However, if you were to run this off a 12 volt supply, it would be pulling around 140 milliamps, which is much more efficient. The only other things that I got inside the box was a extra length of cable, some M2 standoffs and a SD card cover that will stop the SD card from ejecting. So let's open the back of the camera unit and have a look inside. Here we can see our two different sensors. So the one you see on the top, the larger one, that is the Sony one and the one on the bottom is your normal FPV racing sensor. And it amazed me to be honest when I opened this because I was expecting a lot more but they seem to have crammed in a lot of technology onto this board. And even though this is a very powerful camera and there's a lot of technology in it, it only weighs about 18 grams. So as I mentioned earlier, you're going to need to make sure that this will fit inside your frame. Now my particular freestyle frame can use micro cameras but I have to use the adapter bracket to make it fit. So that was the only way I was gonna be able to fit this in here for the testing. Unfortunately, I just don't have any micro camera frames at the moment. And it could have fitted inside one of my race cords pretty easy, but I wanted it in one of my freestylers instead. Because of the camera's new dimensions, it wouldn't fit into the bracket, so I had to do a little bit of dremeling. But two minutes later, I roughly had it ready to go. And this is what it looked like when I first powered it up. Just like other run cams, it does come set up ready for joystick control, but you can change that over to UART control if you want to. You will also notice that stock out the box, it comes set to 2.7K at 60 frames a second. You'll notice in the top right hand side that it says card error. That's only because I don't have an SD card in at the time. Now say you want to change from 2.7K to 4K. You can simply do this using your phone on run cams own app. Basically, it's going to make a smart QR code which you can put in front of the camera and it will then change the settings. And having tried this out in the field, I find that it works very well. If we click on the resolutions, we can actually see our number of options. Most people tend to fly 1080 at 60 frames a second. So now I've chosen that, it gives me a QR code and some user guidelines, but you don't need to have these come up every time. So all you have to do is set the camera into QR mode by pressing the button whilst it's not recording. You will see in the top right hand side it changes to QR mode and then you can just place the QR code in front of the camera. And once you do this the camera will recognise the settings on that QR code and you will then see it change in the top right hand side back to HD preview. So the camera has now been set to 1080 at 60 frames a second. If you power it off and back on again, as default it will start recording in that mode. You can see in the top right hand side that we have the red dot. So Runcam has done a really good job here making it super easy to change modes. So I've gone straight back onto the app here and chosen 4K at 30 frames a second which then made this QR code which I put in front of the camera and now you can see we're back in 4K 30 frames a second. And I found that this worked just as well outside as it did inside but Runcam do say any kind of reflections on your phone can cause an issue. Now before I talk about the flight footage, I do have to mention that I have a disclaimer. 
The camera, when I fitted it, became very loose and was rattling around on the plastic mount. Uh, I had no way of stopping it from shaking around, so you may notice that in the footage. It's by no means any fault of run cams, it's just mine. Fitting it in the particular drone frame that I had just caused me an issue and I had to not use a standoff that held the camera plates together. So there's definitely a little bit of vibration in there through my own fault. Also, I don't really get out to fly very much these days, so my flying is pretty appalling, so it doesn't really help. Although this video is really about the video footage itself. But, you know, it would have been cool if I had some sort of better subject matter to be flying around. Anyway, what you're watching here is the 1080 at 60 frames per second. And uh, I've got no real complaints. Maybe slightly on the wide dynamic range, it can get a little bit dark at times. Um, but other than that, it looks fantastic to me. Very happy with it. Flying around with only 18 grams on the quad made a huge difference. So that's 18 grams for the FPV camera and HD. So uh, I felt like I wasn't using uh, what it's like to fly around with no GoPro on, really. That's how I can describe this flight. Then I switched over to the 4K at 30 frames a second option. Now I find myself very sensitive to frame drops. Uh, I do play a lot of online gaming and, and I like to have super high uh, frame rates when I'm playing. Uh, so when I drop from 60 frames on a HD camera down to 30, I can notice the difference big time. But it will give you some sort of uh, more cinematic effect uh, if that's what you want to go for. Uh, so here we are in 4K 30 frames a second. And again, the only minor thing here is the wide dynamic range. Sometimes the sky can get really blown out and be all whited out, and then the ground can be quite dark and vice versa. So uh, yeah, not too bad. So now I've switched over to 1080p at 120 frames a second. And to be honest, I didn't think there was going to be much use to this, but uh, I'm actually surprised at the quality. I didn't think there was going to be the bitrate there to actually produce a decent image. Now shooting at these higher frame rates could cause an issue if you do have vibration in your frame uh, like I am actually having during this flight. So you may notice a little bit of the fuzziness but as you can see we can really slow that footage down and uh, drop into these trees using all of those available frames captured by the camera. So once I actually get this camera mounted inside the frame nice and sturdy, I think this may be the option that I would end up going for just purely for those extra frames and I can really slow it down and make some really interesting types of video. So you may need to use your imagination here, think of some better subject matter than these trees I'm flying around and a little bit of epic music and I'm sure you'll have lots of thumbs up on YouTube. Okay, that's enough of that. Now, another thing that I have noticed is that the audio can be a little bit of hit and miss. I didn't actually notice this until I was editing. And you can see on the timeline here how the uh, audio just drops off and I don't get anything uh, after I do a major punch out. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, personally for me, I'm not going to be using the audio anyway, so it's not a big deal. No one wants to listen to a screaming quad for five minutes anyway. So the hybrid is ready for ordering now, uh, direct from Runcam, and there will be a hell of a lot of outlets that will be using this because you could use this in uh, some tiny whoop type drones as well because it is so light. As you saw from the footage, it is fantastic. Uh, I'll just scroll through the page so you can have a look at some of the stats on here. As I said, tiny whoop type drones. Um, I didn't go in full detail for some of the extras on here, like the uh, remote on off recording and so on. Uh, you can upgrade the firmware on there using the Speedy Bee app. I've done a video on that Speedy Bee if you're interested. 
Here we've got some of the dimensions as well. If you want to make sure it can fit inside your quad and the package contents that I showed you earlier. And here we have the parameters. Most people will be interested in the video resolutions that it's capable of being recorded in. So basically 4K up to 4K and down to 1080. You will also notice that it is switchable between NTSC and PAL. And you will also notice that it uses readily available lenses uh, with the HD side having the M10 and the FPV side having the M8. So that's it for today's video. I'm gonna play out with some of the DVR footage that was shot from the hybrid camera. This is 100% stock. I've not changed any of the settings. You may see it's maybe slightly oversaturated in places, but um, I'm pretty happy with it, to be honest. Um, I would be happy to use this in races or even uh, in, in my freestyle rigs, if I can get it to fit in my particular frame, that is. If you are a frame manufacturer and you want to send me a frame that will fit this camera, then feel free to uh, send one my way. Um, I've been out of the game for a little while, so I don't really have many things to play around with and produce videos with so feel free to get in touch anybody uh other than that uh, i'll let this play out and uh hopefully i can get this in a different frame soon and bring you some more content so that's it for today guys thank you very much i'll be back soon